Are you tired of your macros never getting to the end? Are you tired of it casting the same ability over and over again? Well, don't worry. Today you're going to learn how to macro. Well, macros are not going to make you invincible. They can make you do more damage as long as you can stay alive long enough to use them. So we're going to show you the tips and tricks of how to use macros like the pros. Before we get into what makes a good macro, let's talk about what actually the macro is trying to accomplish. The macro allows you to cast multiple abilities with one button push. This allows you to pre-stage abilities in a list and then have them cast in that order. Though, how macros work is they cast the first ability, then the last, and then the second, and so on. As it moves down the list, if an ability above the one you're currently casting refreshes, it will cast that one first. And how you take advantage of this is placing abilities in certain positions where they will get the most benefit. While this doesn't mean putting the highest reuse time at the top, that is an effective strategy as long as you're able to cast damaging abilities to do general damage. There are certain abilities that you want to cast every time they come up. These are great to put into a macro, but if you have long cast abilities that will work for a while, you want to cast those before the fight in a separate macro. Before I show you an example of a good macro, let's look at what a bad macro looks like. This macro has a lot of low recast abilities at the top that block it from moving farther down the list. To fix this macro, we move some of those abilities lower down on the list. We also noticed that there were a lot of abilities that we wanted to cast first thing. So those can go really high on the list, but some of them take time to cast. Not all of them are instant. So we'll need some abilities at the top to do damage to initiate the fight. You can see here now that we've expanded the window where everything is in relation to a lot of the other abilities. One of the main things we did was move a lot of the low recast time abilities to the bottom. But another thing we've done, at the top and the bottom, we have an ability that will up our fervor and give us more damage. We want these abilities going off every chance we get. This is a little taste of what we came up with and how it works in action. You can see the skills are still not going all the way to the bottom, but this is only because the enemies are dying so fast. So this is a good example of how a DPS macro works. Now let's look at a healer macro. This is an example of a warden macro. Wardens use melee damage mostly to do heals. As you can see here, I've done an encounter ability to start the fight, and then a utility ability to make me attack faster, and then point blank AOE, followed by a dumbfire pet. Then we move into a damage based heal ability for the whole group, a damage ability, and then a 10 second damage based ward followed by 10 seconds worth of damage. Now the problem with this macro is that abilities above it reappearing can mess up that 10 second timing. And what you can do is place this higher in the list to make sure that those abilities up top won't interfere with this casting order. There's also abilities like Woodward that are going to have a long casting time and allow you to do extra damage. You'll want to place this near the bottom, which seems a little counterintuitive, but it will get in the way of that casting order for that 10 second timer. Now if you put this ability low, you may have a problem with abilities above it blocking its casting. And if you put it too high, then it may stop other abilities from casting in the right order. The way you want to fix this is focus on whether the bottom ability is being cast at all, or is popping up in the middle of where another item should be cast. The way you want to check this is by casting over and over at the guild hall on an immortal training dummy. You want to watch where things pop up and what disappears and what reappears in what order. That's the best way to work on a macro and as you can see Frostbite Slice came back really fast and it's blocking the other abilities from casting in a reasonable amount of time. Though you may make it to the end of the macro, you'll want to watch your heal per second and damage per second on a program like Advanced Combat Tracker. There's a link to a video explaining how to use it above. Though I have a lot of abilities in this macro, as a healer, I have a lot of my abilities on the bar. Macros are only really good for healers for damage dealing and specifically for wardens due to their ability to do melee DPS and heal at the same time. This is different from Furies, as Furies are going to be back farther as they don't have the melee conversion, attack abilities, and a few debuffs in this list. 
but for the rest of abilities you want to have them on the bar. I have a lot of my heals on number 2 and 3, and then I have a power feed ability on number 4. But I haven't forgotten the rest of my abilities. They're linked to quick buttons using control and alt and shift to make even more options. These can be changed in the hotbar section of the controls. This macro has mana sieve at the top. This is in case I run out of power, nothing will be blocking me from getting more power. The next ability I cast on this is Blasphemy, which is in counter taunt to make sure my taunt stays high. The next ability I cast is Chaotic Blade. This one allows me to heal myself the more damage I take. It also does a lot of damage and gives benefits to the group, so I want this casting whenever it comes up. The next ability is Reaper's Touch, which is an AoE Harm Touch conversion. Though I usually cast this before the fight, the reused is almost as long as the duration. This means that this can almost stay up the entire fight, so I want this casting whenever it comes up. The next set of abilities are just damage dealing abilities until we get to Unholy Blessing. Unholy Blessing is a 5 increment heal that I can cast on anyone, but I've got this one set to target myself. Because I need fast casting skills, but still want to use my ascension abilities, I have compounding force and feedback loop at the very bottom. The final skill is Earthshock, which I want casting every time it comes up because it helps me maintain my aggro in the area around me. I also have a lot of abilities that might be in my macro set to quick buttons on my hotbar. Since I only have 25 slots in the macro to choose from, this allows me to free up those slots. The Assassin has a very interesting set of skills to try to build a macro around. You have to put them in very specific places to get the whole thing to work. The first thing we have is Eviscerate and Sinister Strike. These are all positional and from behind. You want these in this order so that the first thing you cast is Eviscerate, and if you can cast it, you do Sinister Strike, which is your Master Strike based on the lore and legend. And then you have Spine Shot, which won't cast if you're too close, but you also have to be behind the target. This works great if you're in PvP and your enemy runs. Next up, we have Jugular Slice, Mortal Blade, and Massacre. These all only require you to be invisible. This means that if any of your backstabs are down, these will cast first, regardless of where you're standing. But none of these will cast if you're not invisible and also only a few will cast if you're not behind your target. This allows you to use your position physically to change what casts in your macro. Next up we have Bladed Opening. This does more damage if the target is over 80%. Also we have Poison Combination, which only does damage if the target is poisoned. Next up we have Mass Strike, which will only work if you're behind your target. It will make you invisible and activate the backstabs or the other abilities that require invisibility above it. Next up we have Lucky Break, which triggers a heroic opportunity. After that we have Stalk, which makes you invisible but also makes your next attack do 10% more damage. You might wonder why this is so far down the list, but remember when you go invisible it activates abilities higher in the list. And if you weren't invisible to start with, you'll start with Bladed Opening and then go into a Stalk and then do your Ambush, followed by all of your abilities. This allows an assassin not to waste their high damage abilities on trash. Next we go into the regular abilities. They are organized so that they will trigger a heroic opportunity as it comes. They are staggered with a coin and a sword picture on each ability. They're also paired up by reuse time to make sure they don't cast out of sync. And since this is PvP, I have also put Caltrops fairly high in the list, along with a lot of debuffs. The rest of the macro includes Strike Consistency until I can get a better alternative, Rob until I can get a better alternative, and Deadly Shot also until I can get a better alternative. The final piece is Point Blank Shot, and as opposed to Deadly Shot, this can be cast at Point Blank Range. This allows me to stun and blur the vision of the target every time it comes up. This is great for PvP, but it also works great fighting monsters in PvE. Speaking of stuns, I have Q and E set to be my stuns. That way I can move around behind the target and activate my positionals. Now without further ado, we'll show you the Assassin macro in action. Here I use Eviscerate and Spine Shot, also Jugular Slice. In a second, I'll come up on two enemies and use Massacre. 
When I've gotten further into the fight, I start using my other abilities and activating a heroic opportunity. This kind of macro allows rogues to seamlessly move from different damage types and positionals so that they can adapt to their situation. This about covers everything for macros. The best way to do a macro is to follow these steps and then use it yourself to figure out what tweaks need to be made. No macro is perfect and you will always be modifying your macro. Also, sometimes you'll get brand new abilities that completely change the way your macro works. So keep those in mind and integrate them as you get them. Remember, macros can do a lot of great things, but sometimes hitting the buttons is just the best thing to do. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, or follow if you enjoy the content. Also, here's some other videos you might find interesting. If you'd like to support my work, please consider donating, buying some merchandise, or join Patreon. Thanks.